Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about O3DE. Now this is a game engine that I have found, let's call it vexing. It has caused me issues in the past. It's got so much potential, but is also the source of so much frustration. And they just did a major update. So the ultimate question is, is it ready? And that's what we're going to find out today. The truth of the matter is O3DE, uh, it's an open source engine. It started off as life as CryEngine way back in the day. Then Amazon decided they were going to get into the world of game development, so they gave uh, Crytek a ton of money uh, for a license for CryEngine, and then that ultimately turned into something called Lumberyard. Now, Lumberyard was used internally at Amazon's game studios, and... Uh, their game efforts have been a bit of a mixed bag ever since, uh, but they kind of just tried to do too many things too many times, uh, all kind of with one engine to rule them all. Uh, they just hired so many people and just, again, they, they just tried to accomplish too much at the same time. And Lumberyard never really took off, but then they so open sourced it out as O3DE. Now, O3DE actually uh, shipped a version uh, about a year ago uh, that was just not ready for prime time. They were going to do a, a game jam to go with it and the reality is it was just so far away from being ready that there's just they shouldn't even consider it well now we've got an update uh, that just shipped this is o3de uh 23.05 and uh there is a game jam coming up and the question is is it ready for public consumption now and we're going to answer that today what you're seeing in front of you this is the new uh multiplayer sample we're going to jump right into it Welcome then to the primary editor for the O3D environment. It is, um, it's nice. Actually, one thing you'll notice is we're actually getting particle effects here uh, that for some reason weren't showing up in the actual uh, executable version of the multiplayer sample. Uh, but you can see it is uh, a nice, complete environment for doing your world editing. The performance is quite snappy. Uh, this was not the case a while ago. So they've definitely cleaned up the performance and the operability of the tooling here. So that is definitely an upgrade. Uh, we've also got a number of new features in this uh, release itself. So 23.05, we've got new things like the uh, scriptable materials. Uh, we'll check those out in just a moment. In terms of scripting itself, you may be curious how things work here. Uh, there are a couple of mechanisms. First off, you have the Lua programming language, so you can script your logic using Lua. Another thing that is built within is the script canvas. So this is sort of like Blueprints Lite. Here is the editor that is built in. We'll go ahead and open up. Uh, here is the input handler for that entire scene we just saw. So the... Uh, the characters' movements are being handled. All of the, the routing of messages inside are using a series of things called buses. Uh, it's just a way of uh, you know sending messages within the engine. You use them if you're dealing with C++. You do use them if you're dealing with Lua. And you do use them for uh, input handling inside of Script Canvas as well. So uh, an, an event comes in on a bus. Uh, create input or process input event comes in. That runs out so you can see where that actually connects to. Uh, so it runs over here. The logic is done. So here is logic to process the input. So if you push forward, we get the player's speed. We multiply it by a value and we print that out. That goes over here to get their forward vector, the location in the world. We try to move with velocity and then again, some debugging messages out. So you can see there is the simple logic for pushing someone forward when a particular key is pressed. And there's more going on here. So there is left or right logic. So you've got this uh, script canvas option. Again, you do have a Lua language option. That was sort of the, the primary way. It seems to be uh, kind of moved away from a little bit. Now, one thing you're going to find just in general with O3DE is they've done more or less a complete rewrite uh, from where we were at in the uh, age of, well, first off, from CryEngine to Lumberyard, huge rewrite there. But then from Lumberyard to O3DE, since this became O3DE, we've gotten a, a brand new renderer, uh, a number of the systems underneath it have changed as well. And then the way that things are ultimately controlled here, this is a very extensible engine using something called gems. And gems are also going to be probably the thing that is going to cause you the most headaches if you decide to go ahead with this guy. Now, the other thing about it is, so we've seen the script programming, the other option uh, instead of script canvas or Lua is, of course, C++. So there is a uh, solution file. So here, this guy right here, uh, there, if you go to the build section, you will find a solution here. Uh, now, interestingly enough, this guy will also run under Linux as well. This is an open source project, and it is actually mandated or managed by the Linux Foundation. So uh, Linux support was added and obviously is a priority given like who the, the founder or the, the foundation behind this actually is. But you can see some example uh, C++ logic for handling. Uh, this is a base weapon effect right here. Um, 
And it just gives you an idea of what the C++ style code is. So if you're looking for an open source AAA game engine, uh, this is about it. <laughs> really kind of, you know, you could say that, uh, first off, you might come back to me and say, okay, well, what about Unreal Engine? Well, Unreal Engine is not open source. It's source available. And you could say, okay, well, what about Godot? Well, Godot isn't really aimed at the same audience that this is. Now, O3D is nowhere near as accessible as what you would find uh, with the Godot game engine. Not even close. You're going to have more headaches. The build process just uh, is a lot more convoluted. The uh, pro asset processing is a lot slower. But this is also more aimed at creating those large AAA-ish spaces. And originally, Lumberyard didn't really have much success. And then ironically, uh, once they kind of moved away from it, uh, Amazon Studios did start publishing some very successful, well, not successful, but comprehensive games that were actually created using Lumberyard. So it is an industry-tested engine. Uh, and O3D itself has uh, been pretty much rewritten around that. Now, you see here, traditional setup here, uh, a number of entities over here. Uh, there are tools in there for like partitioning across different uh, server sides and scales and so on. Uh, it is a component-based engine, so you have your entities and then you attach components to them. As you can see from this list here, uh, there are a ton of components available. Again, everything is extended using uh, something called gems, which basically you can think of as like modules. I'll show you that in a minute when I show you how you go about creating your own project with this guy. Uh, but you see here, you got things like terrain handling tools. You've got vegetation tools in here. Uh, you got physics. Uh, it's literally phys -X physics in here uh, and a bunch more. Again, one of the new things of this particular release is go here to the tools category. You now have this material canvas. Uh, this is kind of mixing their material system and script canvas together into a single entity. And it allows you to actually um, visually create shaders. I'll show you it in a second. Okay, for some reason, it can take a little while to load, which is a bit unfortunate. Let's go up here. And we'll open up an example shader right there. So you see like there's the ball preview of it. Uh, it's going to load in in a second. So there you can see a shader effect uh, in action like so. So this is a brand new feature of the 23.5 release. Um, so you can see using this visual layout for creating this particular effect over time so you see time handles it and then ultimately the output here is a standard pbr based material so you now have this new uh, scriptable material system that was added in this release other improvements in this particular release include uh, physics so we're up to 5.1 which can be enabled over physics 4 which should give you uh, a decent boost of 15 percent in speed uh, we've got improvements to the animation system a more consistent animation editor uh, and animation asset imports process. The animation editor animation graph now has performance visualization uh, to help you profile and optimize their animation graphs. Uh, the train system has a new paintbrush tool, enables user to paint inside the viewport to create or modify train, while the train developer guide aids developers in using and extending the train system. Uh, we also have improvements to the VR, XR, and mobile support as well. Of course, we just got across the board improvements as well. Like the fact that things actually work at this point in time is definitely one of those improvements. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is a quick look at O3D. Uh, it's getting closer and closer to the point where I think I may do a tutorial on it. Let me know if you are interested in learning more about O3D in general. Like one big thing that you need to know about this is there's a lot of support behind it. Uh, there's a lot of industry support. So if we head on over to the O3D homepage, uh, you're going to find, scroll on down here, by the way, it's available at O3DE.org. Uh, scroll on down and you're going to find the people that are actually supporting this guy. And it's kind of everybody, including kind of paradoxically uh, Epic Games, which is interesting. But uh, yeah, so you see here that the, the companies that have thrown resources behind this guy, there's there's a lot of support uh, behind this engine. Uh, there is a very dedicated team working on it, and they were kind of had heads down because they were just redoing the plumbing. The last time that they tried to do uh, a game jam and a public release, it was, was way too soon. It is an engine that just didn't work. And I'm going to tell you right out, uh, it's it's a tricky engine to work with. You will run into pain points, I guarantee it. If you're a more 
if you're looking for a turnkey solution, this isn't it. You're better off using uh, Godot, uh, Unity, Unreal, any of those. Those all will get you up and running faster with less pain points involved. But if you're looking for a truly open source AAA engine, this has the most potential to turn into that. So if you want to check it out, o3de.org. Again, they just actually shipped the uh, multiplayer sample that we saw earlier on. Uh, it does have a full hosting. Um, you know, it, it shows uh, you, know, you can create a server host as well as client to join up with it. The entire thing, uh, again, all the source code is here. Um, you just want to, interestingly enough, I don't see the license that it's under. Uh, so it's got multiple licenses here. Apache and MIT uh, seem to be the primary. So I don't know why that unknown is showing up there. So it is an open source example as well. Do be sure to read the instructions thoroughly uh, when you set it up because uh, the smallest trip up here and you are in trouble. Uh, the one thing that I ran into here is that this is labeled as option number one and then option number two, this is wrong. This should be labeled as step one and step two. So even if you use the project manager, you still need to do these setup steps. So make sure you're aware of that. The other thing that you wanna know about is that you gotta clone the assets as well. And the assets are going to be uh, in the, the, a folder at the same level. So C colon slash temp slash the, the game and then C colon slash temp slash game slash assets. They go in the same uh, parent level directory. That's what it's gonna try and resolve it that way. So do make sure you follow these instructions. But when you get to this point right here, this part isn't an option. You have to do these. You have to register these or the code will not compile. Another thing that you're going to want to be aware of here is the development branch probably won't work for you because it's under development. It breaks a lot. So what you want to probably do is check out the stabilization version instead. Uh, and that one is, well, stable. That's the ID behind it. Uh, the assets project is the same deal. There is a stable version as well. Those are what you want to use if you want to go ahead and check this out yourself. Um, another thing to be aware of, there is so much more to this release than I covered specifically. Uh, again, Material Canvas is a new way to visually create shaders. Uh, the multiplayer sample we saw there in action, there's a ton more going on here as well uh, through a variety of different areas. I'm not going to get into the specifics of all the, what have been added here, but there's definitely uh, changes across the whole of the engine. You know, it's, it's getting more and more and more into a usable state, uh, which is, uh, you know, a good thing to see. Uh, but again, you are going to run into some pain points. This is probably the most difficult game engine that you're going to work with out of any of them, especially at this point in its development life cycle. But there is a lot of potential there. They're also going to be announcing another um, O3DE jam. So from May 5th through 7th, uh, if you're interested, I, I, there is going to be this binary version of it download so you can actually run it. Um, you know, you don't have to build it from source or anything like that. If you are interested in such a thing, I, they're in a better place for doing a game jam than they were last time. Last time that was just delusional. This time it does seem like, you know, an, a viable enough engine for starting to do that kind of work with more of a mass community. But just know that this is more aimed at uh, experienced developers trying to create more large scale titles. This isn't really uh, like a single developer indie focused uh, game engine, if that makes sense. Uh, but definitely an interesting project worth checking out and one that I do have my eye on. Now, if you're interested in actually how uh, things work, this is the launcher. Um, it's the project manager you'll find when you, you first install it. You wanna go ahead and create your own project. You basically come on in here, go new, and you create a new project. And then basically it's gonna pop up a window. You name your project and you put it in directory. I'll just go over the defaults here. The key thing is you can pick, again, pick a template to go from and then the gems. Now gems are extensions that give you additional abilities here. Um, you can toggle them on or off. Some of them are kind of key to the entire thing, but if you want to extend it and you want to give it additional abilities, you're going to come through here and turn on uh, the other gems that you are interested in. And if you're going to run into a problem, I'll also guarantee it is going to be with the gem system. It's just the nature of the beast, the way that things work. But uh, yeah, that's how you go about creating your project. Once you're happy with the gems that you selected, go create project. And at this point, all you need left to do is to build your project. You just go here, build, build now, and it should go ahead and compile. This takes a couple of minutes time. I'm not gonna wait for it to finish. There's nothing really magical or special to see here. If this fails, it's generally because your build compile, your you don't have Visual Studio set up with the right things for building for C++. Uh, so debug from that point in time, but this should just build. Once it's done, you can then go ahead and open it up in the editor. As you can see here, this one I did earlier on, you can open an editor right there, and then your project is up and ready to go. 
So ladies and gentlemen, that there is O3DE. We got a brand new version, 23.05, the first release in quite some time. Uh, they do buy annual releases, so we should get another release somewhere towards like October of uh, 2023. Uh, but this one, it came a long way uh, from previous releases. Again, O3DE is an engine that has done a good job of both exciting it and pissing me off. Um, and this time, it feels much more usable than it has in, in quite a while. So they did a pretty massive rewrite going from Lumbiard to O3DE, and I think it's starting to mature into a usable product. And, and I do the more viable open source engines we have out there, the better the world will be. So I look forward to that. And let me know what you think of O3DE. Did you check it out? Are you going to check it out? If so, what are your opinions? Let me know. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.